Hi, I'm Nell Wood, and I'm here to show you that you don't need a lot of equipment, you don't need a lot of space, you don't need a lot of time, and you don't need a lot of special knowledge that you can't learn in order to start lifting weights or start lifting weights again. So I thought I'd share some of the things that I have in my collection, and you don't have to go out and purchase brand new. Hopefully, maybe you can uh, take advantage of borrowing from someone that is not using, and you can appropriate and use. So first, I'm just going to point out low weight, low weight. This isn't about getting the heaviest weight. I have got two five pound dumbbells, regular um, constructed dumbbells, because I'm going to show you some other dumbbells I have uh, in a little bit here that these are really good, you know, like I regularly constructed, so you can use them this way, but you can also tuck them behind the knee and use them to uh, work some leg muscles. So I definitely want to recommend low weight, regular constructed dumbbells. These are five pounds, three pounds are great, eight pounds are great. Like I said, you don't want to go too heavy. I also have low weight kettlebell. This is 10 pounds. This is a really good piece for pressing up and also doing some warm up exercises. This is 10 pounds. You can find these in pretty much in any like uh, sporting goods store or even, uh, you know, like a Meyer or a Walmart. I also have a heavy bar. This is 20 pounds heavy bar. This is great for bench press, overhead press, uh, bent over rows. This is something that you can purchase off of Amazon as well. Uh, I, d I probably wouldn't recommend going over 20 pounds. I don't know, they probably, I'm sure they do have them more than 20 pounds, but this is the perfect size. In fact, I think it's 18 pounds. I also want to point out that I'm sitting, oops, let me put this down. I also want to point out that I'm sitting on a bench, an actual weightlifting bench. You don't need to purchase one. You can pretty much, if you have a bench, anything you can do on a bench, you can do on the floor is what I'm trying to say. So. You don't have to run out and specially purchase a bench. The only thing that's really nice about a bench is that oops, you are able to do a uh, incline or a decline depending on if you want to uh, add an element of, um, of that to your workout and it just adds uh, an element where maybe it makes it a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. Uh, but like I said, anything that you do on a bench, you can do on the floor. Another piece of equipment I have is just a sturdy chair. So I definitely recommend having a sturdy chair. If we do anything seated, if you don't have a bench, you've got a nice sturdy chair. I would recommend it probably be something like a folding chair, something with some structure. Uh, you can also use it to help balance. So depending on how much space you have, you might have room for a lot of weights. I don't. My place is pretty small, but I, what I have is this really great set that I actually ended up buying secondhand. Did not buy these firsthand. They're stacked weights. They're super cool. So this little thing slides in, and before you slide it in, this is just 15 pounds, I think. Yes, 15 pounds. There's weights inside of the handle or into these things to make it 15 pounds. And then every, there's these plates that you add and every, every single one of these plates then adds another five pounds because sometimes you want more than 10 or 15. Um, it goes all the way up to 50. This is, it's one of those things, this is a great, piece because it it's not a lot of space but it's not a traditional size or shape i guess i shouldn't say size well yeah size and shape it's not traditional what you normally get with uh dumbbells like this so it's limited on how you can hold it with these there's a couple different like i showed you putting it behind the leg for that sort of workout this is a broom handle. This is really great. So it's a broom handle or a mop handle that doesn't have the mop or the broom. This is a really good piece for uh, helping to warm up. 
uh, using it for mobility things. I definitely recommend this for warm up and cool down. That being said, you can also utilize a strap for a lot of warm up and cool down things. <laughs> so you can see, you really don't need a lot of equipment to get started. You just need seriously a few dumbbells, maybe like five pounds uh, to eight to 10 pounds in order to get started. Uh, and I would definitely recommend keeping it light for as long as you can until you feel more comfortable uh, getting and doing it more consistently than you feel more comfortable at adding more weight. You don't have to be in a rush to do that. So once you have the equipment and the space, then you need to set aside the time in order to work out. And so then the question is, how often? And it can be anywhere from one day a week uh, to two days a week to three days a week. I would not recommend going more than three days a week of uh, using uh, weightlifting as a means of exercise because you always want to have rest days and you also don't want to overdo it. If you overdo it when you start, it's going to be miserable. And so I really want to recommend take it slow, take it steady, don't overburden. So you could, if you only had Tuesday evenings free, make Tuesday evening your workout day. In order to build up the muscle though, a little bit more quickly, if you do it two days a week, like a Tuesday evening and a Thursday evening, you've got that day of rest in between, you've actually got then a cushion around it of, a, of two or three days to recover. Or you can do it three days a week, like maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Another way could be a Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday situation. Uh, the, the workouts that I have for you all work different parts of your body. So you could work out two consecutive days, like a Saturday and a Sunday, because you'd be working different parts of your body. Then be sure to give your body a rest that next day or the day after, or maybe two days since you worked out two days to then prepare for the next time that you're going to work out. And so then how do you keep track? You can keep track electronically or on paper, whether it be a calendar or it be a notebook that has what the weight is that you're, the move that you're performing, how much weight you are using to perform the move, and then how often you did the move, like how many sets you did. And Here's an example of what I have, a notebook that I've got the workout written down and then I've got the exercises within the workout along with the how many reps I'm going to do and then I've listed how much I lifted and I just keep track that way. Typically it is three to four to five sets. I use three sets. I do three sets of 12, three sets of 10, and three sets of eight. Do three different moves, three sets of 12 on one move, second move, three sets of 10, third move, three sets of eight. And I'm gonna to try to keep it as simple as I can for you. There are so many different combinations. And once you get more practiced and more uh, capable and you feel more comfortable, you'll be able to figure out your own way that works for you. Thank you so much for joining me for this little introduction to equipment needed for weightlifting. I am just giving you merely a little tiny glimpse into the great big world of weightlifting. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can, not to overwhelm. I've got a number of workouts that you can follow and hopefully they help you then gain that comfort, gain that knowledge that you need to take it out into the world on your own and create your own workouts and share your own workouts with others. Please follow along. Let me know if you ever have any questions. Take care of yourself and have fun. Bye.